Welcome to ClickView Tips and Tricks. My name is Josh Good. I'm a solutions architect here at ClickTech. Today I'm going to show you how to deal with dates and build a master calendar. So we built out a nice application like this. I've got a few charts on it, and maybe we even input the calendar object in there as well. This works quite well if we want to you know, select on a, on a few arbitrary dates, and we can do that. But if you wanted to select on, say, a whole year or a whole month, it, it, it's not quite as, as useful. So there's a few different ways you can approach, approach this. I'll show you first the, uh, what I call the, uh, the, the quick and dirty way or the simple way to do it, uh, is we can simply go into the, the edit script. We find, the, we find the date. In this case, it's order date. And uh, we can just calculate when we're doing our load, the month and the year. So we would type in month order date as order month. And you type in year order date as order year. So that works quite well. And then we, you know, we could go on and, and um, you know, do weeks and days of the weeks and so forth and type all that in. So that works pretty well. Uh, we can save that and reload it, and I'll show you the results. The script's just running through there. And now you can see in our uh, fields that are available, we have order month and order year. So we'll bring those in. In our particular case, you know, we, we ended up with, with every single month um, and every single year that was available. One thing that's interesting, though, about this is that when you do do it using this technique, is if there was a, uh, um, a date that, that doesn't exist in our data, uh, th then we won't be calculating on that. So, for example, if we didn't sell anything in, in April, it would go March and then May because that data actually doesn't exist. And also, if you look at our actual dates themselves, the, uh, the 18th of April is the only available date. And then when we continue to go down, you can see here that then we have the 15th of May and then the 30th of May and, then, and so forth. We don't have every single date uh, in between our date ranges. That will cause problems also when, when we start um, charting things and putting things on, on, onto graphs. Uh, we'll start jumping around on our dates. So what we want to do is find a way to introduce every single date between our minimum and maximum dates uh, and then build out our calendar based on that. So to do that, um, I'm just going to go back into the script. I'm going to get rid of these two uh, lines of code. We'll just comment them out quickly. And, uh, and then I'm going to add a new, a new sheet or a new tab here. So click on a new tab, and I call it Dates. So what I have is I have a script that I, that's been prefabricated for me. I'm going to include it in the, uh, the bottom of the YouTube video. And I'll also, when I post this on Community, I'll also include it in the text in, in our Community post as well. So there we go. I've pasted that script in. So I'll just review what the script does, and then we're gonna, I'm going to show you the few little edits you'll need to make to the script in order to, to make it work in your environment. So the first thing we're doing is we're loading a quarters map. So we're identifying each quarter, uh, and, uh, and one through four. And in this particular case, uh, we're taking row number as month. So we're going to line the quarters up uh, to, to the calendar year. So Q1 will be January through uh, March and, and so forth. If, uh, if you don't follow a, a calendar year in your fiscal year and you want your quarters to be different, you absolutely can adjust the code to do that. The next thing we do is we load this temp table, which is just going to contain our minimum uh, order date and our maximum order date. We call it min date and max date. We then set variables up for the min date and the max date uh, based on this table. And now since we've used that data, we don't need that table anymore, so we just drop out that temp table. We then create the, uh, the temp calendar. And we basically start at the, at the minimum date and iterate through until we reach the maximum date using the auto generate to, to auto generate that table. So now we have a table called temp calendar that contains every single date uh, in it between the minimum and the maximum date. We then call that temp calendar uh, table uh, back into memory and we create a new a new table called master calendar, which has every single date. And then in these lines here, we're calculating out the various uh, week, month, day, current year-to-date flag, last year-to-date flag, and so forth. And you, can, again, can edit these as needed, but this will get you started. Uh, we then sort the entire calendar here, and then we drop the temp calendar table because we no longer need it. This table here is the table we'll end up with, the master calendar table. It's going to join to the rest of our data based on order date in this case. Uh, and, and we'll have to make sure that that makes sense in our particular uh, example. So what do we need to do to set this up to make sure it works with our particular data? Well, we're going to go back over to where that data exists. 
So it's in the order header table. We've named this table here. If you don't have a table name already, I advise you to add one. It will inherit a table name based on the table it came from, but it's much better practice to give it an overt table name so you know what it's going to be. Uh, we can see here that it's actually called order date, capital O, capital D, order date. So that's the, uh, the field we're interested in. So what are we going to do back here? We go back to our, our, our date uh, sheet. And we're going to load, and we have order date. In this case, it happens to be correct. But it's, a, it's coming from resident orders, and we want it to be from resident order header. And uh, I believe I got it right, but actually what I do when I'm, I'm doing this not in an example is I go here, and I copy it, and paste it over here, so I don't make any mistakes. Order date. Order date looks the same, but let's be thorough, and let's just copy it on top like that. And now we've pasted that on top. Uh, so that's going to go through there. And then we're going to load the master calendar. And again, here we want to make sure order date here is matching order date there. Yes, they're exactly the same. So we can leave that. In your case, if you had the, the date field named something different, you would also want to change this particular field as well. And then everything else looks good. So uh, that looks good. We'll just save it. And uh, we'll hit reload. And click view goes through. And then you can see down here at the bottom, the quarter maps gets loaded. We create that temp field um, from the order header table, creating one line. One, and there's two fields in there, one for the maximum order date and one for the, um, the minimum order date. We auto-generate the temp calendar, and then the master calendar gets, gets generated. And we'll click OK on that. So now you'll see we have a whole bunch of additional date fields, including year and month. And that's available to us as well. Before we had it called order date and order year, and, and we've named it slightly different in, in our case. Of course, we could go back and rename that there. Well, I can also check if we have every single date between our minimum order date and our maximum order date. So if we hit this drop down now, you can see we have the, the 18th, 19th, 20th of April, and so forth all the way down. So every single date is now available to us. So that works really well. And uh, the, the final thing I'll show you, just what happened, is we created this extra table here called the master calendar table. And we got order header, connecting that to the order header table. You may have more than one set of dates in your particular um, data model. So we can go back to our script, and we actually have that situation here. So if we scroll down here, you can see in the employee, we have employee hire date. And I've actually aliased it to hire date without a space. We can use the same script to generate a calendar for that as well. You could simply copy this script and then edit it appropriately. I'll just show you that real quickly now. So I'm just going to reload that. We don't actually need the quarter map again because uh, it'll still be in, in our data set. And we're going to put that down here. And I'm going to make this a comment um, for the start date. And to be thorough, we should probably do the same thing here and go there for order date. And then we're going to paste in our script down here. So now we have the script in here twice. There it is there and up there. So since we now have the script in here twice, and, and we now we're going to have a week appearing twice, we need to start adding in um, a little more description on our date field. So we're going to call it order week, order year, order month, order day, order current, and so forth down to the bottom. Just adding in that. And now when we get to the, um, to the employee start date, we're going to need to do some editing on that as well. So uh, we call it hire date should be consistent. Let's be um, consistent here. And we'll make it higher date, higher date. And then we're going to pull that from the employees table. And I'm going to give that a name as well. So we'll take that. And we take it from the resident employees table. So now we have a min and max from there. Uh, we're then going to set it. Uh, we reset our, our, our min and max here. We dropped our tables appropriately up top, so then we can reuse the exact same names. 
and we're moving all the way through it here. And then this is going to need to be higher date. And then we can go higher week, higher year, higher month, higher day, and so forth down to the bottom. Change this from master calendar to higher date calendar. And we'll change this one up top from master calendar to order date calendar so we know what we're looking at. So we're going to do exactly the same process, but now what's going to happen is on our employees table here, we're going to get another table off it called um, higher date calendar. That'll come off the higher date field here. Click OK. Save it. Hit reload. And now ClickView is going to go through it twice. And you can see here, here's where we're bringing in the data for the order dates and then doing it for the uh, higher date. Click close. And you can see now in our data model, we now have, I'll just do the auto layout here, we now have the higher date calendars got generated as well. And you can continue to do this for as many different uh, calendars as you need to. If you did want to uh, make this a little bit more advanced logic and don't want to keep repeating the same code over and over again, you could also create a, a table that keeps track of all the calendars you, you want to create and then loop through that and adjust the, um, the, the order date and the order week and so forth into um, you know higher date or higher week and so forth um, by, uh, using a variables with for loops. That would be, we would cover how to do looping in a, in, in a separate video. That concludes ClickView tips and, and tricks for today. Please consult ClickView community for additional information. Please remember we have expert services and partners who can also assist you with your specific ClickView deployment. Thank you very much. Thank you.